So hi guys, um, so today I'm just going to go over uh, the process for turning uh, photos into a, a 3D object uh, using PhotoCatch and also talking about some issues with repairing uh, your object uh, if it's severely damaged. Um, I'm going to start with a really bad um, series of images I took of a desk in the classroom. You can kind of see as I go through these, I did a really, really bad job of like making sure that the desk was selected, kind of came in, zoomed in, zoomed out. And so here are the photos that I'm going to be using uh, for this this project. I'm going to go ahead and open up PhotoCache and uh, catch and uh, select those photos. And you can see they are right here. Uh, just go ahead and hit open. Uh, and then I'm going to, as we normally do, I'm going to select the model quality of RAW and I'm going to make sure that it's unordered and high sensitivity for um, the, um, the features. And I'm going to enable object masking. This will mask out the table, uh, and hopefully select the table and not the rest of the room. Uh, if you're having issues, you might want to try uh, turning this off and it'll just try to figure out everything that's in the space. But let's go ahead and just select that and I'm going to hit create model. Uh, this is going to take quite a while, so what I'm going to do is speed up the video at this point, uh, and I'm going to show you what we get. Okay, we're back, and you can kind of see this is a pretty terrible scan. We've got things going on on this side here that this is really damaged, uh, damaged on the bottom, holes everywhere. Um, so, and we're going to be using this mesh in combination with a pretty good scan of a desk. So I really only care about the things that are on top as an example. But there are pieces of things all over the place because of uh, the way we took this in. So obviously this is not the best scan. Um, let's go ahead and like clean it up so we can use it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into the crop area. Sorry, transform area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... Um, uh, I'm going to turn this grid on. And I'm going to rotate this so that it makes the grid is kind of uh, oriented correctly because we're going to rotate this so that we can crop things. Uh, currently, everything is taken at a, some weird angle based on the room. So once I've got everything kind of lined up, I'm going to grab my uh, green uh, circle here. And I'm going to try to get the desk to align with the grid that we see here. So you can kind of see it's pretty close like that. I'll zoom out so you can see it here. Then I'm going to move to a different view, bring the object back into space, there it is. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the front view so that the green is, in essence, is flat here. Looks pretty good here. And then I'm going to go to the side view where the, the green is flat and the blue is uh, flat, kind of. And you can kind of see everything looks like it's lined up okay. So at this point, I'm going to go to the crop tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it from the bottom go up a little bit because I only want this top part here and I'm going to crop the top if I had any other uh, elements that I wanted to crop off the top which I don't uh, I'm going to crop the um, the front so in order to do that I have to be on top so I can see uh, the object here so I'm going to crop the front so that it's like right where the desk starts and the back and I'm just doing this generally not terribly accurate just to get rid of some of the slop and then finally, we're going to crop the sides, not all of it, just again, some generic slop. So that what I'm left with is this object right here. You can kind of see um, just this part right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and export this uh, as an OBJ file. And I'm just going to export it to uh, my desktop here, assuming that it'll not crash. And I'm just going to call this top desk. And I'm going to put it on the desktop and save it as an OBJ file. So what I should have on the desktop now is a top desk file. And you can see I've got the actual model here uh, being exported. You can see it right here. Uh, now, if I were to try to take this into Fusion for um, to fix it under Create Insert Mesh, I know because this is so damaged that it's going to crash Fusion. So there is a workaround in order to fix this so that you can repair some of the damage uh, in Fusion without crashing Fusion. And the way you do it is you go to uh, a, a web browser 
and you type obj to stl online just type that and then uh, i'm just going to choose one of these at random it allows me to upload the obj file so i'm going to find that top desk obj model and you can see it right here um, as soon as it opens here it is and i'm just going to upload that and hit convert to stl so what i'm doing is taking the object file which is damaged and is going to crash Mudbox or Fusion. And I'm allowing one of these online converters to convert it to something that's not going to crash. Now, it's going to take a, a few minutes for this to occur, but when it finally does, you can hit the download button and it will download the uh, STL file. You can kind of see here. And that file can now be uh, used in Fusion. Now, it's not a great file. You can see it's got some issues because it's not a solid. It's still just uh, a, you know, a hollow object. But at least you can bring this into Fusion now uh, under Create, Insert Mesh. And I'm going to find it in my Downloads folder because that's where it put it. You can see it right here. I'm going to bring this in. Uh, and I am going to now select it just by selecting it and then clicking on the little repair tool uh, for this object. Uh, you guys know we usually use rebuild uh, in class, right? Uh, click on the preview button. Now this takes, a, again, it takes a little bit of a, a moment to rebuild this object. And uh, as you can see, once it does that, you've got, I don't know why it went away, um, you're gonna have a solid object. now. You might not be happy with the quality of this rebuild. So again, you can change it from fast to accurate or preserve sharp edges, which sometimes works, right? And then another possibility is to change your density and just jack up that density slider uh, to make it uh, the mesh a little bit uh, more dense. Um, once you do that, you can hit OK and it will repair the object. Hopefully there's enough data in here. You can kind of see there is a little bit of data there. And if I just move around, you can see there's still plenty of problems associated with this, like floaters and things that you'll need to bring in the mud box to, to fix. But at least for the most part, you've got uh, this object uh, as a solid object uh, ready to be used in mesh and uh, mud box. So I'm gonna hit okay. That'll finish the uh, finalize this mesh. And then what will happen when it's done is we will then go to the export area here. So I select this, hit export, turn off send to 3D. I'm going to select it as an OBJ because you know that mesh or mud box only uses OBJs. Unit type is centimeters. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to save this top desk fixed. And I'm going to save it to my computer, uh, uh, actually to my desktop. And that's from Fusion. So that's step two uh, for a really damaged file. Step three is to go in the mud box, uh, open that file. So here it is, top desk fixed. Hit open. Uh, you will probably get still errors because there's plenty of, of problems with this. And what will happen is this file is so small, it might actually just not show up. And we remember that the first thing we need to do is go to our selection tools here, select that object that you just brought in here, and scale it up at least, um, double click the scale button if you don't see this here, but scale it up at least 100 on all three X, Y, and Z axes. Now if we zoom out, we know that this uh, this object is a little bit um, more to the size that we need. I'm then going to select the faces here so I can select faces and watch what happens. Now what we have, I'm going to notice that I've got some selections here. You can always uh, go to edit, deselect if you uh, accidentally do some selection and we can hit the B brush button to make the brush smaller and bigger. But what I wanted to show you, uh, here it is. Uh, let me just uh, zoom down here and move around you can see that there are some things that are floating here do you see that little floater right here area here there's some floating things here uh, things that are floating that shouldn't be part of this like multiple pieces and you know that this will not print with those floating objects 
One way to get rid of all the floaters really quickly is uh, to click once on the main mesh and then do it twice. And what that does is it double click, it selects everything that's connected to that mesh. And you can see when you do that, it selects every single thing that is that initial mesh, but everything else gets, um, is not selected. So if we could only invert what we've got, which we can by going to edit and then invert selection, which is inverse face selection here. Now what we've done is we've actually selected all the things that are just floaters that are not connected directly to this object. And if you want, at this point, you hit the big delete button and that deletes all those objects. So now that we, now we know we have one object where everything is fully connected. At this point, you could use Mudbox to fix things. You could use it to uh, remove faces, to smooth things out, uh, and uh, just overall, like, get rid of certain things. You know, you can use the patch tool, those kinds of things. And when you're ready, you can then bring in another object and blend this object with that object uh, to create a, a finished product. So hopefully this helps a little bit um, going over of you know, going over the process of how do you take a completely damaged object, um, bring it in from PhotoCatch, bring it into Fusion after exporting it to STL, repairing it in Fusion, then bringing it in the mud box so you can further like modify it or do things with it um, like uh, to, to make it something that's printable on the resin printer for your diorama project. I hope you found this useful and uh, good luck on the project, you guys.